Hey guys, it's Aaron. So I've actually had several requests to show how to create filigree in Scratch, SketchUp. Um, filigree is, well, it's this. So kind of script, leave, kind of flowing detail work that shows up on a lot of fancy stuff. So I want to go in and show how to make a uh, ideal for SketchUp version of filigree. I've seen models where people have gone into extreme detail creating leaves with a, a subdivision engine and real soft. We're not going to go into that. That is a whole, I mean, for one thing, we can't cover that in 10 minutes and it is a whole art form to go through and create that. What I want to do is show how to take a drawing like I have above and turn it into a level of detail that would work on a SketchUp model. So let's hop right in. All right, so I have this image. It was a hand-drawn image, and you can actually see some spots that, uh, like right here, my, my line went in, and my uh, I started tracing this. My SketchUp line stayed nice and true, where the hand-drawn image maybe got a little bit soft in there. Um, they're really what you want to work off is off of is up to you. I want to just give you a couple tips on how to take this image, whether it's drawn by you or taken off of a you know classical architectural building that sort of thing and how to turn it into geometry you can work with inside of SketchUp. There are extensions out there to trace black and white uh, geometry like this, bitmaps, and turn it into lines. We're going to do it manually because you learn more that way. Um, not opposed to those extensions, but that's not how we're going to do it. So first things first, I have a black and white drawing and I'm drawing black lines on top of it. So this is difficult. So what I like to do is I like to turn on X-ray. There is, of course, other ways you could do this. One thing you could do is you could go set your line color to something like yellow bright that's going to show on top. Being as I have nothing else in this model, I'm not worried about snapping through too much. I'm going to be conscious of my, my surface snap, so uh, I'm going to draw in this view. Okay, so I'm going to do most of my drawing using Bezier Curves. I'll link to Bezier Curves in the description down below. What Bezier Curves does, and this is an extension, it is from the SketchUp team, so it's a, a kind of a native extension. It lets you click four times. So I'm going to click right here to start. I'm going to click right up here where my curve is going to end. And now I have two handles, one coming off the beginning, one coming off the ending. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one down uh, in the direction I want to go so, so that this curve starts to follow the black line right here. Uh, I am coming off an existing line right here. So I'm not starting from scratch, I'm actually coming off an existing line. To get this curve to blend into the curve I'm coming off of, I'm going to want to stay on that magenta line like that. So I'm going to come down the magenta line till you know, the first major part of the curve follows the, my reference, and I'm going to click. Now I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to pull this next line down so the rest of that geometry follows close, like that. All right, now, in, in all of this filigree, I don't have sharp edges. I kind of have round edges. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to click here, go across to here, and I'm going to start with my, my next reference. I'm actually going to pull off of this line right here, and I'll make this one actually parallel to that. I'm going to go like that. Now, something to note, this is what uh, Bezier Curves does. If I select, I'm going to go select and pick this first line. If I look at Entity Info, it tells me, there's 20 segments in that line. Okay, so this is this big, long, sweeping line. This short little line where it's just basically a U, if I click on that, also 20 segments. So Bezier curve, despite the length of the curve you're drawing, will always draw 20 segments. All right, I'm gonna go to draw Bezier curve again. I'm gonna connect to the end of that little guy right there. I'm just gonna draw, so I have a couple curves here, curve this way and then I curve back around. I'm gonna keep this simple and I'm gonna click right about here, right about where the transition from this curve goes into this other curve. So I'm gonna click right there. My top curve, I'm gonna to try to come off of, remember that, that U I created, I snapped off of the green line, so I'm gonna go like that. And then this guy right down here, I'm gonna go right about there. Now I'm gonna click here. It's hard to do, for me, with, with only two references, we're gonna, dig a little more into Bezier curves we go through, but I'm gonna actually do this as two curves also. I'm gonna click here, again, grab my inference, my magenta line, start to pull down like that, 
come over here like that. Click right here. Come up here. Again, pull off magenta. There. There. And then this, this thing to close it up. Magenta line here. Magenta line here. That magenta just assures that those lines all start to look like one. Now, they're not perfect. They're not... I'm not saying it's going to have one beautiful swoop, um, but uh, at least they're in line right there. I'm sorry, I'm going through here kind of quick because I got a lot of things I want to show you guys. So here's here's a thing that happens in filigree a lot. We have lines crossing over lines. So we also have this pretty much even, uh, th this piece I'm assuming should be the same width all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another uh, bezier from one side to the other here. I'm going to pull up again on the magenta line. So I stay in line right here. Pull that magenta line out there. I got should have a magenta line over here too. So I'm going to go like that. And you'll notice I cross right over this geometry. That is intentional. To create this, this piece right here, I'm going to select this line. I'm going to use offset to go from the end of it to the end that I'm connecting to. So I'm going to click here, bring that to here. That line cr create a little bit of a break there. So I want to make sure to get rid of this little teeny line right here so that I can close my, my uh, shape later. So there we go. Should check down here too. Oh, just slightly off. So I'm going to delete that line and then just draw another segment right there. So that actually closed that. Ooh, look at that. That's a good thing. When you draw that last line, it closes up. That's awesome. So then to close this piece, to put this piece in here, I'm just going to come back in, uh, draw my Bezier curve here to here. Again, pull down that magenta side like that. Uh, I want this to taper a little bit, so I'm going to actually not use offset on this piece like that to there. And I can do one more. I'm doing this instead of arc. You could, if you like arc, using arc to put the ends on here, you could absolutely do that. Uh, like I said, I'm drawing uh, the actual lines instead. All right, so once that closes, now I can come in here and I can make sure that I have an intersection. Some This didn't break right here. So what I can do is come to the intersection, click there, and click there, and force that break. See that? Then same thing over here, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, right here, I actually have a break of the segment, so I'm just gonna come here, trace over to here, and then from there, trace down to here. And that broke those lines, it broke those lines, it broke those lines, so now I should be able to get rid of all of this, and that stays as one piece. So that's just an idea of how you can go about putting those lines in. It is kind of a slow, steady process. It's not a quick, you know, click once and, and get it all done. I, I have over here a finished one. Once you get to that point, what you're going to want to do is select all these Bezier curves you've created, right click, and say Weld Edges. What that's going to do is it's going to automatically go through and all these, all these pieces of lines are going to get welded together. That's real important because what you don't want to have is a whole bunch of segments that when you try to pull this into 3D, it's going to make it messy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all the line work. I don't care about the reference image anymore. In fact, I can turn X-ray off right now and I'm going to make a copy of it. So I'm just going to option move or control move on Windows and put a copy of it up here. You know, I'm, I'm going to do, yeah, that's good. All right. So if this was sitting on top of a surface, um, obviously the only thing that would differentiate the face of this filigree work from the surface would be lines. And that's not going to work if I render it or if I turn lines off ever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and do a little push pull on it. And how far is relative to obviously to how big this is. But I'm going to pull up all four, four, four pieces like that. Now you can see that if that was sitting on top of a flat white surface, you know, now I got, let me close that up. Now, uh, almost, now I got something that's going to show up as a detail piece on here. Um, it's good, but it's not great. It looks a little bit, 
it's hard edged, right? So real filigree is gonna have like nice smooth curves. And I was saying, it is totally possible to do a SketchUp, but it is, it's an art form in itself, creating that, that volume, but we can kind of uh, force it. For what I'm doing, unless this filigree is a focal point, I can go in and just make it look a little better on here. And here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna double click on this main face. I'm gonna hold down shift, double click here, double click here, double click here. That gets all the lines, all the edges. Now I'm going to hold down shift again and turn off the faces. All I wanna do is get the edges around up here. And now I'm gonna to go to Entity Info and I'm going to turn on Soft. I'm not gonna turn on Smooth. I'll show you why I'm not gonna turn on Smooth. But just turning on Soft, oh yeah, see that? See how that gives me that nice soft corner? That looks so much better than it did before. The reason I turn on soft and not smooth, if I turn on smooth, what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to go in and smooth these edges. And what I'll end up with is a bunch of weird gray shadows that aren't gonna look good. But popping this onto a piece of like, uh, you know, antique furniture or a door frame or something like that, that, that adds just a huge level of detail and makes it look, like I said in the very beginning, a lot more fancy. Hopefully you like that. Like I said, I, 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 I would love to dive into making a full three-dimensional filigree detail, but it's huge. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of geometry. It gets super heavy, super quick. Uh, this is, it's, there's some weight to this if you were to add it to a model, but uh, if you put in a component, and a lot of times filigree repeats. So if it was like at the, I don't know, the top of a four poster bed or something like that, you'd have the same detail on multiple sides. So you can save a little bit of weight that way. But adding it that way and then putting that soft corner on the top really adds that, that just that little piece of detail. And if you were to go chase down one of those extensions, it'll change the black and white bitmap into line work. You could actually do this in like a minute or so. So worth checking out. If you did like that, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos every single week around here and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment. Like I said, the request to show some filigree has been a comment that I've gotten, I don't know, five, six, seven times. People ask for this kind of detail and uh, I'm only doing it because you asked. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.